Renowned author Philip Yancey claims that forgiveness is an unnatural act. And behind every act of forgiveness lies a wound of betrayal and the pain of being betrayed does not easily fade away. To complicate matters further, we know that we live in a somewhat dog-eat-dog -dog world. I mean, do squirrels forgive cats for chasing them up a tree? Or do dolphins forgive sharks for having eaten their mate? Even our financial, political, and athletic institutions run on this same unrelenting principle. The baseball player on third base who is called out before reaching home plate isn't given some kind of a pass by the empire. In the real world, we live more often by the law of unforgiveness than the law of forgiveness. I believe Yancey's right. Forgiveness is an unnatural act. Now, despite I don't know how many sermons you have heard on forgiveness, maybe a hundred, we still do not easily forgive, nor do we find ourselves easily forgiven. Elizabeth O'Connor claims that forgiveness is always harder than the sermons make it out to be. We nurse our sores, we go to elaborate lengths to rationalize our behavior. We perpetuate family feuds. We even punish ourselves and others to avoid this most unnatural act. And then this morning, God bless him. In the scripture, Peter asks the question that perhaps each of us would really like to be asking Is there no limit? forgiveness. Must we forgive over and over and over again, even if the offending person does not seem to change? And Jesus responds, you must forgive not seven times, but 77 times. Of course, it's not the actual mathematical equation that we're to keep track of. We are supposed to forgive over and over and over and over again, keeping no accounting record, remembering that God forgives us beyond our wildest calculations. We are to do no less with those who offend or hurt us. And of course, this is hard work. In fact, it might possibly be the most difficult work we're asked to do as Christians in this lifetime. Forgiveness is not about letting go of what bothers us or concealing or ignoring the pain. Forgiveness is the reality of acknowledging that we have wounds, debts, trespasses, and gaping fissures of pain in our past that continue to shape our future. These painful, disappointing experiences have power. They have a voice that comes over us if we clutch onto them, as we relive them over and over again in our mind. Now, what forgiveness does mean is that we desire to recognize the future is in God's hands instead of remaining entrenched and gripped by a past that has been difficult for us. Forgiving allows us to release, to unhook what has happened to us so that the future might be filled with new and positive experiences. As once again, we align the body, the mind and the spirit to be together. Forgiveness certainly requires of us intentional, conscious choice and decision making. So why then would God ask us to give or to forgive? Or rather, why would God 
require us to forgive. God tells us to forgive because that is what God is like. We are instructed to love our enemies, to pay, to pray for those who persecute us. Not that our enemies are going to stop hurting us, even though we're praying for them, but we are doing for them vicariously by substituting what they are unable to do for themselves. When we forgive, we are acting on behalf of God. Jesus' parables highlight a God who takes the initiative toward us. You remember the parable of a lovesick father who runs to meet his prodigal son. You heard of a landlord who canceled the debt too large for any servant to reimburse. Next week, we'll be talking about, about an employer who pays the 11th hour workers the same as the first hour crew. You might remember the story of the banquet giver who throws a big old party for undeserving guests. Jesus, in his life and in his death, broke the chain of ungrace so that in our following him, we are now to take the initiative toward offering forgiveness of others as we continue doing Jesus' work. Henry Nowen has written these words which resonate with me. I have often said, I forgive you. But even as I said these words, my heart remained angry or resentful. I still wanted to hear the story that tells me that after all, I was right. I wanted to hear the apologies and the excuses. I wanted the satisfaction of receiving some praise in return, if only the praise of forgiving. The scriptures and Jesus' parables indicate that God's forgiveness is unconditional. It comes from a heart, a heart which demands nothing for itself. This same divine forgiveness calls us to step over the arguments that we use to justify our anger. It demands that we step over the wounded part of our own hearts that feel hurt and wronged, that want to stay in control as we place more conditions between us and the one whom we're asked to forgive. The Apostle Paul in Romans 12 reminds us that revenge is God's to avenge. Therefore, we are to remain joyful and live in harmony with each other. In the final analysis of forgiveness, I believe it boils down to the fact that forgiveness simply is an act of faith. By forgiving another, we are trusting that God is better at justice making than we are. By forgiving, we release our own right to get even, and we let all the issues of fairness for God to work out. It is in God's hands to balance justice and mercy. When we finally come to the place of forgiving, the hurt may not disappear, but the burden of being the judge falls away. And that opens us to new possibilities for a different future. No longer are we held captive by the one who has hurt us because it is God who is now able to step in and God always knows what to do. I'm not kidding you, forgiveness isn't easy. And rarely do we find it immediately satisfying. 
it's hard. It's really hard when someone wrongs us. And it's hard when we need to sometimes forgive ourselves for something we have done. The chain that binds us, that maybe even torments us, can be loosed by giving the ugliness of the situation over to God. Because Jesus has shown us that we are to forgive. I find it a curious thing that the first word, the very first word Jesus speaks in agony from the cross was Father, forgive. Of all of the things he might have said, words of recrimination, condemnation, accusation, no, the first words he spoke were words of forgiveness. I can imagine Jesus saying to us as we offer forgiveness, just as I have loved you, so you ought to love others. Will you join me in prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.